I'm Priscilla Barrera with the Investing News Network, and here with me today is Simon Morris, Managing Director of Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. Simon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're entering the second half of the year. In your opinion, what have been some of the challenges and opportunities in the lithium sector? I think I think challenge is well known from uh, bringing new supply into the market. Um, I think that's quite well known now that it's not straightforward. It's not just about the spodumene, getting the spodumene up and running and, and over to China. It's about that conversion capacity and what's actually real. Um, so that's the biggest challenge for me uh, that the lithium industry faces, and it's not going to change for the next two years. Um, but really, I'd say the opportunities or the trends that have caught my eye definitely would be it would be the auto OEMs getting serious about lithium, um, not just... Um, they've been talking to a lot of people for, for some time and, and getting their uh, education uh, up to scratch. And I think now we're, we're coming into a new era where the auto companies know that you have to, well, someone's have gonna pay, is going to have to pay for the supply chain to scale. Um, and whilst they're trying to work that out, they know that now I think they have to have some kind of uh, input somewhere whether that's the raw material or the cathode or the batteries. We think it's going to lie with the raw materials, the two key ones, which is lithium and cobalt uh, in our eyes. Um, and I think that's the biggest opportunity that lithium space faces right now. All right. And the last time we spoke, we talked about solid-state batteries. And it seems everyone is looking at this type of technology as a potential replacement for lithium-ion batteries. How advanced is the research of, for this type of technology, and what are the main benefits compared to the current lithium-ion batteries? Yeah, the way I view solid-state is it's still in a heavy R&D phase, but it's in the commercial R&D phase. So the way I view any battery technologies is kind of in four sections. One is the invention of the battery, and say uh, that usually resides in universities. Then you have the R&D stroke commercialization of that battery, um, which is where solid state is right now. Then the third stage I see is uh, com true commercialization, like batteries being used in the real world in, in a significant number. And the fourth phase is wide-scale wide scale usage in things like electric cars. Um, with solid state, I don't see a solid state battery being used in an electric car any time in the next five years. Uh, a true, a, this is a true solid state battery that I'm talking about. Um, in terms of um, a potential replacement for lithium-ion batteries, it's a long way off. And it's quite specialist. I mean, the principle behind solid state is that you use a lithium metal anode and not graphite. Uh, it's a solid polymer in there, and you get 70% improvement on a lithium-ion battery at the cell level. Uh, the problem is the lithium metal. Um, that's probably, at present, the biggest blocker for the cost of lithium metal and the, pr and the production, the biggest blocker for the next stage of solid state, the commercialization. All right. And um, is the lithium market prepared to supply the raw material then that is needed for these type of batteries? Yeah, I think they are. And I think the lithium market is looking at um, lithium metal for solid state. It's actually, there's been a decent amount of expansions in lithium metal in recent years. Gangfeng lithium is the one that's done the biggest expansion to 1,500 tons. But, you know, you're looking at an, a market that's 3,000 tons a year of lithium metal, which equates to about 15,000 tons of LCE. So it's tiny compared to the other um, markets and chemicals for lithium. To scale that um, is going to take, is actually not going to be too much of an issue. It's the cost of production that's going to be the biggest issue. Lithium metal sells for about $150,000 a ton right now. So you can see the, um, the challenge for these battery makers um, if they want to scale, but I, I actually think building that supply chain, we're, we're at least five years away from lithium metal having to scale for battery, significantly scale for battery production. Right. And um, I guess you just mentioned, but how long does it take for a shift in technology of this scale to take place, even if it's not solid state batteries? And um, is it worth having this conversation now? we will see a change in cathodes to higher nickel be adopted first before switching to solid state or other advanced technologies? And do you expect cathode chemistry to remain the same? 
It's a good question. For me, the shift in these technologies takes a long time. Uh, even if it works uh, and it's proven to work in a vehicle, it's still going to take a good amount of time. I'm talking, uh, we're talking tens of years here rather than single digit years. Um, saying that, I could see a situation where solid state becomes a specialist battery technology for high-end vehicles, and lithium-ion is actually used in the majority of mid-range EVs. Um, but again, you're at least five years off solid state batteries being used in any form of mainstream vehicles. Unless something significantly changes and shifts right now, uh, there's still too much R&D uh, to do in this space, and I think there's going to uh, solid state batteries will be used in much smaller applications up until that point, such as drones and mobile phones and things like this. And that will give some real-world feedback to the industry that doesn't really have that yet. On the high nickel cathodes, the shift to 811, which everyone is talking about, uh, we think it's actually going to happen a bit slower than what people are thinking. We anticipate really an uptick in probably 2020 onwards to start to have a material impact on the market. Um, the use of 811 in solid-state batteries also is possible because they use the same, well they can use the same cathode, so the solid state batteries we talk to, um, the majority using NMC, and it could easily be NMC 811 or any high nickel formulation, and that is um, something actually will be, that, that will be solved by the time these companies start making batteries for EVs. Right. Okay, another Big topic right now is prices. What is, in your opinion, one of the biggest misunderstandings or myths regarding pricing? The biggest myth surrounding pricing is what is the lithium price? Because there is no one lithium price, which the newcomers want one lithium price. But the existing market, the existing producers, have a wide range of lithium chemicals and then grades within that uh, specification. So you could have, well at Benchmark we do uh, monthly lithium price assessments where, with the lithium industry's reference price. And we do um, six lithium carbonate prices, four lithium hydroxide, and one lithium feedstock price. And it shows you, uh, the way we collect prices by speaking to the lithium uh, supply side, by speaking to a wide range of consumers and they're doing our own internal analysis each month to create a range. Um, it just shows you how fragmented and diverse the, the lithium market is and that's very difficult for newcomers to understand that we're not dealing with a commodity here, we're dealing with a speciality chemical. Um, that being said, it'll be interesting to see how the market evolves when you have companies like the, or exchanges like the LME looking to list lithium uh, how will that impact the market um, is something that you know we're very interested to find out. Um, and pricing is still opaque, despite the work we've done at Benchmark. It's still opaque, um, and and that's why uh, the supply chain relies on us to provide that clarity. All right, and finally, my last question for you today. What would you say is one of the factors that is most overlooked by investors? Is there anything you think investors should be paying attention to right now that could impact the market going forward? Hmm. Investors, I think, struggle to understand, and for good reason, they struggle to understand the lithium chemical conversion part of the equation. It's easy to look at the mining. That's quite transparent, both on the brine and, and spodumene side, but really what is the determining factor for the industry right now is, is how much conversion capacity is within China. So we spend a lot of time in China building our own um, internal view on this. Uh, that view is that we're about 640,000 tons of capacity listed. Now, listed in nameplate does not mean it's actually there. And that's a key thing. Really, for us, the real capacity number within China right now this year is about 220,000 tons. So investors would read 650,000 tons is going to be lithium oversupply. We knew it. Uh, let's let's get out of the industry. The reality is that real number is about 220, and then that's not operating at capacity. So the capacity is probably you can probably half that again to get the amount of production that we would want to see. Then all of that production in China isn't necessarily a quality to go into batteries. So that's another hurdle that the industry has to go over, and so. 
the further you go down the supply chain, the harder it is to to make the right kind of products for the for the industry, and that will naturally restrict supply. And I think that is the key thing for investors to understand. Thank you so much for joining us today, Simon. Thank you very much.